Welcome back to Restless. My name is Father Joseph Gill, priest of the Diocese of Bridgeport, Connecticut, and you've joined us crazy young adults as we restlessly seek the face of Christ in the midst of today's mixed up world. You've joined me, Matt, and Lauren part two. This is uh, Lauren, Matt's twin, not the other Lauren. Mm -hmm. And did you know, another random fact for you, we were just throwing random facts out today. Our earlier episode had random facts, but did you know that Matt is married? I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you were sleeping when it happened, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I did know this. <laughs> Total so, shock to me. So, for those for those who are listening and who have listened for a while, I don't think we've recorded an episode since you've been married. Well, yeah. So the last. That's really exciting. Yeah, yeah. That's really exciting. So we actually have Matt's wife. Her name is Renee. Welcome, Hello. Renee. Hello, thank you. Thank you for coming and joining us today. So the topic with Renee is, Renee has a really fascinating backstory, fascinating uh, testimony of faith because she's a convert and she just wants to kind of share. I I love conversion stories because it shows how God's grace continues to move in people's lives. And so Renee, first of all, tell us your story. I know you're not from around Connecticut. Yeah, yeah. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, And... Yeah, I guess I'll just get right into it. I I grew up um, Presbyterian, um, and I grew up really like involved in my faith and strong in my faith. And um, my parents were very involved in in our, the church that we went to as well. And uh, yeah, like involved in every aspect. I helped with the children's ministry, and I was involved in the youth group, and I sang in the worship team, and um, all of that, uh, all of that stuff, like everything I could be involved in, I was involved in. Um, and then I went to college, uh, Belmont University in Nashville, where I met Matt. So what led you to a Catholic university? It's not Catholic. It's actually not Catholic. Belmont's not Catholic? No. Well, so you're thinking of, is it Belmont, Belmont Abbey? Abbey. Oh, yeah. that's different. Yeah. Than, I didn't know that was different than Belmont. Yeah, yeah. Belmont yeah, that university. one's in North Carolina, I think, Belmont Abbey. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Belmont University is, I think it's it non-denominational. Was, it was, yeah, it was Baptist turned non-denominational. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, so I, I went to Belmont pursuing a musical theater degree. Um, so I know Matt's big into music. Is that a music school? Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's in Nashville. So it's like they, they have a ton of, um, great like resources for musicians and songwriters. And, um, so that's really what led me there. And, uh, and it's, uh, there was a lot of prayer that went into that decision. And I mean, it, you know, God obviously had a great plan for why I (laughs) went there. I met Matt and, so many things stemmed from that. Um, when I was deciding where to go to school, I prayed about it. And the reason I chose Belmont was because I thought I might meet my wife there. Really? Yeah, I had an option for NYU and for Belmont. And the only reason I chose Belmont was because it was like, hey, it's a Christian school. I have a better chance of meeting someone I can marry. See, I thought you went there because it's Nashville and that would really launch a music career. Yeah, but, but NYU had a, had a nice songwriting program too. Okay. Yeah, and, and I had scholarship there, so it was like, Equal in price. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I had a way cheaper option, but I decided to go to Belmont because it was a Christian school and I knew that like, I knew that I would, I remember telling my mom there was, I I think I could become two different people depending on where I choose to go to school. So I want to go to the Christian school where I feel like I'll be like. Now I went to Franciscan University, which is one of the best Catholic schools in the nation mm-hmm. and and like Catholicism pervades everything but when you go to a place like Belmont like is it truly Christian like are these students like do they worship do they you know have Some a relationship with Jesus yeah I yeah. think there are like there are like sections of different like there are some students that go there just for music you know and like they don't it's yeah Christianity, Christianity. is like a it's like a negative yeah or or mm. just it's or like a non non-issue for them and then you have like another group of students that go there because they want a school that you know focuses on the faith and i think there's a that, that, like that's a large section of students yeah. i would say um 
So I did feel like it was it was truly Christian, and I felt that from my professors too, Good. which I was grateful for. Especially because I know the music and the arts doesn't usually team with uh, right Christians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It tends to be very secular. Yeah, I mean it, it was it was interesting. I mean, like one of my songwriting professors, he wrote on Lauren Daigle's album. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So like there were definitely some real Christians there, but I also had another. I, I mean, I would not to say uh, my other songwriting professor wasn't a real Christian, but he used to say things like, "I'm gonna curse and uh, preach to you in the same sentence." <laughs> you're like, you're like, okay, man. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> yeah, and he did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, one of my musical theater, actually, the director of the musical theater program actually led a Bible study for the women in the musical theater program. So it was like it was definitely. I was. I'm. I'm still grateful that that that's where I chose to go. So, what was your goal? Did you want to get on Broadway? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That really? was the goal. Yeah, that was the goal all the way up until like COVID happened, and then I kind of had to take a step back and reevaluate because because everything was shut down. Sure. <laughs> so yeah, Broadway was yeah one of the hardest hit. Yeah. yeah. So it wasn't even a possibility at that point. But yeah, that's. I mean, that's why really why Matt and I met because we both ended up doing a study abroad, sort of abroad in New York City. Um, And, and I did that because I wanted to be in New York City where there are, you know, lots of opportunities for dancing and singing and acting. And um, yeah. It's funny that New York would be a study abroad I know. <laughs> yeah, it was, I know, it was called Belmont yeah. East. Yeah. So they, they didn't really look at it, you know, Yeah. as abroad. Yeah, it's not really abroad, but it was... But hey, yeah. if you're from the Midwest... That's true. You know. And I mean, I bet that's a great opportunity to get connected with some people on Broadway and that'll right. launch your career, hopefully. Yeah, and it, and it was. It was, you know, it was a really good experience for that. Um, and it, you know, ended up being where I met Matt. Yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah. So that was, yeah, Broadway was the goal and then, and then COVID happened and everything changed. Everything, so many things changed. <laughs> so one of the changes was you changed religions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> in the middle of that. Exactly. A, a big change. What, what was it that interested you in Catholicism? Was it, was it just Matt or was there more to it than that? You know, I think, so when Matt and I first started dating, I remember him, I, one of my prerequisites for dating anyone was always like, he, they had to at least, you know, believe in God and like be like, believe in Jesus, you know, be a Christian Mm -hmm. of some sort. I, growing up Presbyterian, I didn't really like think about denomination all that much. Mm -hmm. Presbyterian, Um, not Calvinist, (laughs) you know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Like it wasn't kind of more evangelical. Some of the, it was, yeah, I think it, I mean, yeah, our church is an evangelical Presbyterian church. Oh, okay. There you go. So, yeah. Um, so I remember when when we first started like, you know, talking, um, he said something about like his mom would want him to get married in a Catholic church or something like that. And I was like, okay, you know, like fine, whatever. Like we'll we'll deal with that, like yeah. down the road. We've been together for three weeks, man. <laughs> like, you know, I just, not talking marriage yet. <laughs> uh, yeah. nope. But I just remember it being like, okay, because my dad actually grew up Catholic. Oh. And he converted, I mean, converted, he just like, you know, he started going to a Presbyterian church with my mom mm. um, when they like, you know, got serious in their relationship. And so I think I, I had that as a model and kind of was just like, you know, he's not going to stay Catholic. <laughs> mm-hmm. Not because of anything that I would like do or say, but I just kind of like my view of the Catholic church was was very like um it, like bland almost like it's it it was very like uh rules and yeah not, not yeah like the relationship exactly yeah and so i just felt like it wasn't something i needed to worry about and then matt started getting really uh you know he he started growing way deeper in his faith and i was like oh no he's not gonna, he's, he's like doubling down on this Catholicism thing. I have to look into this and see like what this actually is. So Matt, was any of that in response to the fact that you were dating a non-Catholic? At oh the time? yeah, a hundred percent. I'm because I, I remember at the time I was, I was struggling with scrupulosity deeply. Um, and I, that scrupulosity was, should I be a priest? Hmm. And I remember 
wanting so bad Protestantism to be true so I could be a pastor and marry Renee. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally serious. Yeah, I, like, I, I wanted that so bad. And so I was really looking into it in the sense that it was like, okay, well, what's, what's true? I got to figure that out first. Mm. Um, and that was when I was introduced into apologetics. Um, and I just like, I was like, no, no, the Pope is, you know, real. So, <laughs> so for those who don't know from our listeners, apologetics is the study of how to defend the faith. Yeah. Yeah. It comes from the Greek word apologia, which means defense. Yes. So, yep. Okay. So you're deepening your faith, which makes you kind of like, uh Oh yeah. <laughs> Who's this guy that I'm dating? <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. So I w- so then I actually ended up texting my, um, pastor from my church at home in Pittsburgh and, uh, and asking him for uh, like resources on the differences between Catholicism and, you know, Protestantism and kind of just looking for advice on how we could kind of, how we could make it work. Cause I was, you know, I was really interested in Matt and I wanted this to, I didn't want it to to be an issue, but I knew that it would, it it had to be something that we addressed. And we also, we had reached the conclusion we wanted to be both Catholic or both Protestant. Hmm. Uh, But we weren't just going to choose one. Yeah. Like it was going to be, be this is what we think is true. So we both have to reach that conclusion separately. Hopefully. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. 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 Okay. Let's see where that goes. Really great thing to do. Cause yeah, I think, yeah. uh, Joining it without any reflection would just not be yeah the best option. Yeah. 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 And so I rem- I actually remember being like, I mean, this is later on, I guess, but I remember being just like really worried that I was only being convinced of Catholicism because I wanted, because I was in love with Matt and I wanted to like marry Matt and yeah. that you know, and have that united front in faith. Well, when, when your Protestant pastor texted you back, did he give you good resources or? Yeah. Well, yes. yeah, he, yeah, <laughs> yes. He gave me a great resource. He gave me a book by Peter Kreeft. Oh, <laughs> and I was like, who's a great and, Catholic apologist. Yeah. Right, and, listen, yeah. and like, I didn't know, I didn't know who that was, but it was, a, the book was called, um, is it Catholicism and fundamentalism? No, no it was, it was Catholics uh, and Protestants. What we can learn what, from each other. What we can learn from each other. Ah. And so like reading that, I was like, oh, okay, you know, like this will, this will be good. This is exactly what I need. And, um, and I read it and it took me a while to read it because there were some terms in there that I didn't know, like some, just some Catholic, you know, lingo, lingo that I didn't know. That's fair. Um, he's a dense, dense writer as well. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I, I remember getting to the end. I remember like, as I was reading through it, kind of being like, okay, but like, we're going to get to the part where. Protestantism is, you know, kind of defended here. And then I remember like getting to the end of the book and being like, what, what, what is this? I was like, this is a, this is Catholic. I was like, why do I think the Catholic church is right? I was like, what, what just happened? (laughs) And, and, uh, it backfired a bit. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it did, you know, it was the right book for me to read. the, The pastor did send you a really nice text when you, when you entered the church though. Oh, no, he's... Yeah, he's a very... He's, he's great. Yeah, he's a very ecumenical man. Uh, yeah. Like, like, he doesn't... He's got no animosity towards the church. Well, yeah. I don't know that most... From my own personal experience, and this is very limited, but I don't know that most Protestant pastors um, think in view of, of sec, sex, sectality anymore. I don't know mm. the right word is. Yeah. But like, right, right. In terms of, like, if, if someone leaves the, the Presbyterian and joins the Lutherans, they're not like, oh, no, that's a crisis. It's more just like, okay, you're just picking your favorite ice cream flavor. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think I had, I mean, the other pastor at my church was definitely a little bit more anti-Catholic. Not in like a, you know, mean or mean way or anything like that. But I just remember like the conversations that I had with her were very different from the conversations that I had with this other pastor who was, um, who uh, like kind of led me to <laughs> Catholicism, <laughs> whether he wanted to or not. Like that kind of that's how it ended up happening. So, what was your family's reaction? Um, well, so my dad, my dad grew up Catholic and ne- didn't leave the Catholic Church, you know, because of any animosity toward it. So he was very um, supportive, and I, both of my parents, they were, my whole family was very supportive. I should say. Um, my dad was the least, I think, 
effective. rattled by it. Yeah. Mm. Um, because uh, like his siblings are all still, you know, practicing Catholics. Um, my mom was definitely uh, a little bit more, um, I think, just taken aback and like a little surprised. She probably didn't see it coming. You didn't really discuss these th- these things with her. I, you know, I I did like I was nervous too because I knew that she she didn't have as much, um, or or she just she had like a, a few difficult experiences like with Catholic in Catholic churches, um, in her past, nothing like crazy, but just like she kind of had a bad taste in her mouth toward the church, mm. um. And so I was, I was just nervous to, and her faith is super important to her. Like she's really uh, a faithful woman. And so I was, I was worried to, to kind of like give her this news of the, that I was thinking about. Um, I remember like being at home during COVID and praying the rosary and kind of like, like being worried that someone was going to like walk in on me praying the rosary. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I like hadn't um really told them yet that I was that I was considering this. Mm. Um but by by the time that I was actually converting, you know, my mom is the best. I love her so much and she was you know, very supportive. They both came to my um confirmation and um which they're in Pittsburgh and I got, I was confirmed in New York city. So it was not like, you know, a 10 minute drive down the road. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, so they ended up being very supportive. It was hard. I know it was hard for her. Um, I think especially because, uh, my, my brother has walked away from his faith. Mm. Um, and so I think it, I, I felt this like, I felt like a guilt about leaving the faith that she had raised me in, knowing that now both of her children had kind of walked away from it in it to a certain extent, like Mm -hmm. in very different ways. But, um, well, do you see any glimmers of hope that they might be interested in investigating it? Um, maybe potentially, I think more so my dad. Sure. Um, I my Matt has had really really good conversations with my dad. Um I think he's more just open to it. Mm-hmm. Um naturally, I think my mom, I've I've had some conversations with my mom and I think it's just it's like harder for her for whatever reason. Um and I hope that I hope that it ends up like coming around that mm-hmm. you know, they're open to it. Um but I think yeah, I think I, I I was talking to Matt about wanting to just show them that we have so like there's so much common ground. <laughs> yeah, there's so much common ground, um, and then maybe they'll be more open to. Especially, I think when you know, when we're fighting a culture that's so secular, anybody mm-hmm. with a deep relationship with Christ should find in another believer, you know, a true battle buddy. Yeah, absolutely. In a real way, I mean, yeah. We used to do a number of uh, ecumenical gatherings. Uh, when I was chaplain of Trinity High School called uh, Knights of Unity, which were really powerful because it was, uh, we started it one year just um, on the feast of the um, the week of Christian unity, which is usually the last week in January. And so we got all these Protestant ministers together and myself and uh, and a couple of praise bands got together and we just like had basically like an old fashioned tent revival, mm-hmm. preaching, music, it was uh, prayer, worship. It was really dynamic, really beautiful. And yeah, it showed that there was a, a much greater common ground. And one of the things that always struck me is that the Protestants were struck um, mm-hmm. by the fact that, you know, because because I think there's a lot of misunderstanding as to, in Protestant circles as to what Catholics believe. You know, they do think, some of them do think we worship Mary and that we don't have a relationship with Jesus. And right. they're kind of shocked that, whoa, you guys do praise and worship and you do you know preach the gospel truth and not just you know, your own rules and regulations, whatever. Yeah. There so no. can be bridges built there. Absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome that you did that. That's really cool. Because I think that that would have opened my eyes. I mean, you know, it eventually my eyes were opened. But um, I think, you know, just seeing that uh, the praise and worship and... Um, yeah. Can you speak to the, how much of a role that played? Yeah. you growing up? Yeah. I mean, I so I sang in the 
on the worship team at my church from uh, the time I was like 12, I think, to the time I, I mean, to like even in college. And um, well, even now you guys are both doing music ministry, right? At a yeah. local parish? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, we'll do like praise and worship nights. Yeah. Um, and so, but like, I didn't know um, that that was something that was done in the Catholic Church. Like, I just didn't know that that type of music could be a part of my faith experience as a Catholic, even even like when I first converted, because I converted um, during COVID. And so like there was like no music. <laughs> yeah, not a whole lot of opportunities there. Yeah, there was no music. And, you know, the parishes that we were going to, like on even on Sundays didn't have any music or or the music was like not, it was just a little abrasive, you know, like it wasn't. Um, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. So, so I think I, I remember, um, kind of resigning myself to not just not having that anymore mm. as a part of like my worship. Um, and, and I was telling Matt earlier how, you know, that is, I think, I think, you know, the timing of, of my conversion was on purpose because the Lord really showed me that the center of worship is not music, but it's, you know, it's him, the yeah. Eucharist. Yeah. Sure. You know? Um, so, so no, you've been Catholic then for two and a half years, two, yeah. two years, two years. Yeah. You're coming 2021. Yeah. 20. Yeah. So I guess almost two years. Yeah. Two okay. years this, this Easter. So does it feel like home or has there been an adjustment period? Yeah. I mean, I definitely think, yes, it definitely feels like home now. And I think, a big part of that is now that Matt and I have found this um, praise and worship, you know, uh, like the, the the apostolate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're both a part of the Sacred Heart Guild, Sacred Heart, or the Jesus, or the Guild. Jesus Guild, um, yes. whatever you might call it. <laughs> yes, that's an organization in our diocese to promote the arts. Yeah, yeah, and so just like finding that has kind of it kind of showed me that. Like oh, I can the, the talents that God gave me are still useful here. I mean, to to build on that, honestly, from the outside looking in, it's been easy for me to see. Like, so I'm I'm new to praise and worship music. The first time I ever listened to it with any sort of regularity was last Lent. Really? Uh, and, and as a matter of fact, I I hated it for a long time. Like I <laughs> I like I had this weird. Uh, you know, distaste. Um, and us, you know, doing this together now, it's been easy for me to see how the Lord prepared her for what we're doing now in the church she grew up in. Mm. You know, that I like that it isn't, it's not something that she, she has to take anything away from, but it's just something being built upon. Um, and how her experience in the church ha- makes her like such a natural, you know, on stage, if you will, right? That like I had a lot of discomfort with it mm. and and it's helped me tremendously. You know, so I see how the Lord's used it for me. Well, that's that's what the catechism is often said about other religions, you know, is that we, we recognize all that is good and true and right. helpful in other religions. You know, we don't condemn it wholeheartedly and rather we say, okay, that's, you know, that's something good and even something that we can we can imitate ourselves. Because I mean, I think the, the Catholic contribution to the praise and worship movement has been kind of a recent thing. Mm-hmm. You know, we think of like Matt Maher or, a um, few other artists, but generally it's been Protestants who have writ- written the music, recorded the music, and then, you know, we finally picked it up. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah. It, I mean, it's, it's so it's exciting that we've kind of, or I've I've been able to get involved with something like that in the Catholic Church. And also just, I mean, the community that we have, um, the Catholic community that we have has been really, really beautiful and... um uplifting. And I, I didn't kind of, I, I kind of didn't expect to find that in the Catholic church prior to my conversion. Mm. Um, but it has been so great with, you know, like the young adult groups and, um, and even where we're working too. Like mm-hmm. we, you know, now we're both working in Catholic schools and it's just, it's so, I, I, I feel so much more, um, steeped in the faith. Mm-hmm. Um, 
now than I than I ever have. Beautiful. Yeah. So what advice would you guys give, both of you, and even you, Lauren? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just riveted. Sitting, sitting there listening to this entire episode. <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the moment where I come into the store. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> So what would what advice would you give to somebody who is considering perhaps converting to Catholicism? Um I think I would my I think I would say go to adoration. <laughs> like go sit in front of the blessed sacrament. Just let Jesus do it. Yeah. Yeah. Can, yeah. You, can you tell the story of what you experienced in adoration? Sure. Um <laughs> Yeah, so we went to, this was like a year maybe before I converted. Um, we went to the Adoration Chapel, and um, I was just really struggling, like trying to, I was wrestling with the idea of converting, and I just didn't know, and I was feeling so confused, and I was praying and um, just looking at at the Eucharist, not like, not sure you know, what I was looking at, if it was really, truly Jesus. And I remember just saying, like, Lord, is this really you? Like, are you, is that really you right there? (laughs) And I heard two voices. I heard a really, um, like, calm, strong yes. And then I heard a, like, cry of desperation screaming no um and there's also in the chapel there's like a statue of um saint michael the archangel uh like slaying the the dragon satan yeah. yeah satan and um and i just like the two images that were in my head like the two things in my point of view were the eucharist and then Satan. And it was like, uh, you know what I mean? It was like, those were the two the voices two that I heard. Yeah, yeah. Very much fighting for your soul. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, so that was, That's so awesome. I, that was a big part of, yeah. I remember coming out of the chapel and telling Matt, like, you can't let me forget this. <laughs> so was Matt your godfather? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just no, curious. That, I don't know how that worked out. What, no, I, been I had been baptized already, so well, I didn't. But confirmation sponsor. Yeah, so, no, he wasn't. I actually, I, I felt strongly about wanting it to be someone, um, wanting it to be someone who, like, someone's not Matt. <laughs> <laughs> someone not Matt. Someone not Matt. That's fair. Yeah, I wouldn't want Matt either. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just because I wanted, like, I, I, I just really, really wanted it to be something that I was doing. Not for Matt, but for, you know, my that's, journey of That's got to be kind of a tough thing in your heart. Like, right, you know, how much is this because Matt wants me to and I want to have a good, happy marriage versus like I want to and, and this is really yeah. the truth that God's calling me to. Yeah. But it sounds like you wrestled with that. Yeah, it, that was a big, that was a big uh, just worry and concern that I had. And I think it was also part of it was just like worrying about what other people were going to think, like, mm-hmm. which, which shouldn't have been an issue, you know, like that shouldn't have been on my mind at all. Yeah. But, you know, I converted and then a week later, Matt proposed. <laughs> <laughs> um, which, and... which I had like requested. I, I was like, I don't want you to propose to me before I, like, I just need to focus on yeah. confirmation oh, right good, now. Good timing. Yeah. Um, my, the, the piece of advice I would have given isn't to someone converting, but rather someone who was in a situation like mine where you were dating someone who was considering it. And it was something that, so like two, three months in, we eventually reached the conclusion that I should never broach the topic Mm. Um, because I was trying so hard to convince her that it was just like, it was, it was unhealthy for us as a couple Yeah, Um, because it, it it basically led to us just arguing all the time. Yeah. Um, but also it would have taken away that independence of the decision. Right. And so for probably like, you know, month one to three, I would like bring it up and it would lead to arguing. But then I think like month three to like 12. So a, a, a solid period of time, I never brought it up unless she wanted to talk about it. Mm. Um, and, and it was that stepping away and then realizing like, I'm not going to convince her of anything anyway. Like I should just be praying, you know? Yeah. That was a huge piece of, you know, it was a, it was great uh, learning material for me because that's how you should approach 
any kind of that's very true yeah no like there's there's only so much headway you can make yeah and especially depending on the relationship you know that was a relationship that you wanted to keep good right because it's going to end marriage (laughs) which it did (laughs) although i do remember one time um we were playing gym in cardinal kung and you came up to me and you said what what resources do you have to try to convert a a protestant and i was like matt i just want to play basketball (laughs) (laughs) But that's okay. I that's honestly don't remember saying so that. <laughs> you totally did. You totally did. I just wanted to play basketball, but it's right. <laughs> <laughs> but nevertheless. Fair enough. <laughs> well, now, yeah, I mean, now his focus has shifted to other people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, now you do have a plan. And of, by that, I mean yeah. all of them. <laughs> <laughs> or at least your in laws. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think that's especially important because uh, the other piece of exciting news is that you're giving birth and. Three months, right? No. Yeah. Three, three months? Yeah, three months. Three months. Three, yeah. four. What three is, months, yeah, whatever. May. May. <laughs> and how, how important that is for a family to truly be united in faith. I think that makes a much more powerful witness to the to the child. Yeah. You know, sort of being torn. Oh, mom believes this, but dad believes that, you know. Right. Yeah, exactly. And that, I think that was one of the driving factors of why this was such a big topic of concern and conversation in our relationship because we just we really wanted to raise a, a faithful family, and yeah. we knew that that wouldn't happen if we were if we couldn't agree. Like, yeah. what what kind of model would that be for our kids yeah. um, if we couldn't agree on what truth was? So, well, I think you guys are well on your way to having a very faithful family. So, thank you, Renee, for joining us on this episode of Restless. Thank you, Matt and Lauren. <laughs> thank you, Lauren. Lauren, you're, you're welcome. Your contributions. Really, I did. Really, I did. So much. Really, so I'll tell you. <laughs> I did so much. You did. You did. <laughs> and I had a lot to share. <laughs> Mark this down. The quietest Lauren's ever been for half an hour. I'm, honestly, I had to stop myself from interrupting multiple times. I'm but, sure because you probably saw the whole pro- process from the outside. Well, both of their stories play a role in my story. so We'll, we'll have to do a part two. We have yeah, to do a part two yeah, on yeah. Lauren's perspective. Yeah. On so as they're, as they're both talking, I was like, hmm, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well then stay tuned for future episodes of Restless you can find us on Veritas Catholic Network 1350 AM or 103.9 FM tune in next time <laughs>